Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and of the free and the home of the brave. Let us pray. Lord, you now place new roles and new authority on your son, General Stephen Scott Nordhaus. Earlier today, we thanked you for his parents, Don and Sandy, his wife, Shannon, and for Whitney and Clay, Luke, Noah and Austin, and for his longtime family and friends. We acknowledge them again because they will be a source of strength he will need in this new role. And now we also, Lord, thank you for the strength that you gave him through his classmates, fellow servants throughout many prior years, and mentors who you started to send him nearly 40 years ago and who you continued to send him throughout these past four decades. Lord, some you sent to be his friends, some to be teachers, some for him to confide in, some you sent for him to help. But all of them reinforced in his soul the knowledge that we are stronger together, that we are fellow servants, and that the honor of our profession dictates that we must take care of one another. Lord, we recall in Scripture that often you had your hand upon the heart of your military commanders. You not only gave them the task to support civil authority, but particularly to strengthen their nation's soldiers in the worst, most challenging times of peril. So we ask you that, again, through your hand, you likewise provide General Nordhaus the encouraging words that he will need to always lift up the spirit of our National Guard, that you provide him wisdom to sense things that are about to come and help him to address the problems that he sees as opportunities. And may he have the ability to show other people the path through those challenges. So Lord, we sincerely ask you for these gifts for him today, but also in some measure for ourselves, for we need these to continue to be servants who serve something greater than ourselves. And this we ask in your precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, D.C. National Guard Band, Command Master Sergeant Retired Dawson, and Chaplain Zalewski. Sharing this special occasion today are many family, friends, and distinguished guests. We are extremely honored to have in attendance General Nordhaus's family, which includes his wife, Sharon Nordhaus, his daughter and son-in-law, Whitney and Davis Swain, and their children, Henry and Daniel. 
his son and daughter-in-law, Captain Clay and Madeline Nordhaus, and their children, Alexander, Heidi, Theodore, and Thomas, sons Luke, Austin, and Noah Nordhaus, his mom, Sandra Nordhaus, and his sister, Michelle Kale, and all other family and friends joining us today. We'd also like to welcome our distinguished guest. Please hold all applause till the end. The 27th Commandant of the United States Coast Guard, Admiral Linda Fagan, the 28th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Joseph Lingell, United States Air Force, retired. The 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Daniel Hokinson, United States Army, retired, and his wife, Kelly Hokinson. The Honorable Ronaldo Kiyohane, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. Lieutenant General Stubbs, Acting Vice Chief, National Guard Bureau. SEA, Tony Whitehead, the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. The 13th Director of the National Guard, Lieutenant General Michael Lowe, United States Air Force retired, and his spouse, Diane Lowe. And the former Vice Chief, National Guard Bureau, Lieutenant General Mark Sasseville, United States Air Force retired. General Nordhaus would also like to welcome all distinguished guests, adjutants generals, general officers, members of the senior executive service, colleagues, extended family, and friends joining us today. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the presiding official of today's ceremony, Admiral Christopher W. Grady, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. So to all the family and friends and members of the Joint Force, good afternoon. For today, we are here to mark a significant occasion, the assumption of responsibility of the National Guard Bureau by its 30th Chief, General Stephen Nordhaus. I also would like to thank the extensive list of distinguished visitors here, particularly General McKinley, General Langell, thank you for being here, and my very good friends, Dan and Kelly Hokinson. It's a great honor to be with all of you. To our Department of Defense leadership, our general officers, especially all the tags that are here, flag officers, senior enlisted leaders, directors, senior civilians, thank you for your leadership. And to the National Guard Bureau team, Thank you for all that you do. And finally, to the citizen soldiers, the 430,000 men and women of the National Guard, thank you for manning the watch as we sit here today. Thank you for being always ready, always there. We should all reflect on the nearly 400 year history of our National Guard, a history that is replete with heroism and service and sacrifice. The Guard has played such a significant role in every major conflict in our nation's history. From firing the famous shot heard around the world to two world wars to Iraq and Afghanistan and operations throughout the homeland, the men and women of the Guard have helped shape the nation into what it is today. And beyond fighting, the members of the National Guard serve their fellow citizens by responding to natural disasters and public health crises. Indeed, right now, thousands of National Guard service members are responding to devastation wreaked by hurricanes throughout the Southeast by conducting search and rescue, route clearance, and distributing life-saving food and water and medicine. Thus, we need look no further to find heroes who are fulfilling their sacred obligation to protecting and serving the American people. While still a congressman, President Kennedy observed, you as guardsmen by your sacrifice have earned the goodwill and affection of all in America. Although spoken nearly 80 years ago, these words certainly ring true to us today. So how about a round of applause for the guard?
You know, we ask a lot of our men and women in uniform, whether regulars or guardsmen, but we also ask a lot of their families who share in the sacrifices and joys, who uphold, uphold the same values of strength and who are equally devoted to a higher cause. I am sure everyone here would agree, our families are such an important part of who we are. So today, I want to recognize General Nordhaus's family, whose service and sacrifice and support has been instrumental in his success and in the success of the entire joint force. And although you may not have volunteered to embark on this journey as Stephen did, you have served alongside him as he dedicated his life to making our nation and our world a safer place. Of course, I have to start with Stephen's wife, Shannon, a 35 year spouse who has raised five wonderful children while always advocating for her other families of soldiers and airmen. I'd also like to welcome their children, Clay, following in dad's footsteps, a captain in the Space Force, Whitney and Luke, who are both working professionals, and Noah and Austin, students of business and music at Dayton and at Michigan. And of course, welcome to Stephen's extended family. His mom is here with us today. His dad is out there on VTC land. And to all his friends from all around the country. You know, I firmly believe that operational readiness directly contributes it's directly driven by family readiness and that a stronger family means a stronger force. And so to the Nord houses, you are the embodiment of that strong family. And Christine and I thank you for your service. And on behalf of the entire joint force, thank you for your dedication to and your many sacrifices for the Air Force, the National Guard and our nation. Cool. And now to Stephen, the Joint Force's newest and most junior four star. <laughs> is a, and also the most junior member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I don't know if anybody told you, but at the next tank you have to bring snacks. <laughs> so call me if you want to know what the chairman really likes. I like skills, so you know, over to you. You, Stephen, have had an impressive 35-year career, and there is simply no one more qualified to follow Dan and lead our nation's guardsmen. From flying F-16s as a young active duty pilot to serving as the executive assistant to the chief of the National Guard Bureau, from commanding the Air National Guard Readiness Center at Joint Base Andrews to the National Guard Bureau Director of Operations, and most recently, as commander of First Air Force and Continental U.S. North American Aerospace Defense Command Region. We know that you are ready. So as you step into this pivotal role, I know that your profound understanding of the complex authorities and relationships in this vast organization, your trust and confidence in the incredible men and women who fill these ranks, and your unyielding commitment to serving them and our nation position you, Stephen, to continue Dan's impressive legacy and carry us forward to even higher levels of excellence. So Stephen and Shannon, Christine and I wish you the best throughout this tour. We look forward to working alongside of you as a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And we thank you, Stephen, for your willingness to continue leading in our joint force. And we thank your family for their service and their sacrifice and their dedication to our nation. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Grady. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, General Nordhaus will join Admiral Grady on stage to be appointed as the 30th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. The appointment ceremony is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. It affirms that the President of the United States entrusts General Nordhaus with the responsibility and care of the National Guard Bureau.
At this time, the Senior Enlisted Advisor of the National Guard Bureau, SEA Tony Whitehead, will join Admiral Grady and General Nordhaus for the official passing of the colors. The passing of the colors symbolizes the transferring of responsibility to General Nordhaus as he becomes the 30th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. The colors are the visible symbol of the unity and loyalty of the Guard. The Senior Enlisted Advisor of the National Guard Bureau is the custodian of the colors. When the colors are not displayed for the Chief, National Guard Bureau, they are in care of the Senior Enlisted Advisor. SEA Whitehead will pass the colors to Admiral Grady. Admiral Grady will then pass the colors to General Nordhaus. His acceptance of the colors demonstrates to the soldiers, airmen, and civilians of the National Guard that General Nordhaus accepts responsibility. General Nordhaus will pass the colors back to SEA Whitehead again, entrusting him with the care of the colors. Under the provision of U.S. Code Title 10, Chapter 1011, Section 1050-I2, General Stephen S. Nordhaus assumes the position of Chief of the National Guard Bureau, effective 02 October 2024. Captain Clay Nordhaus will now post the positional flag, replacing the personal four-star colors with the official heraldic symbol of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Thank you, Admiral Grady, SEA Whitehead, and Captain Nordhaus. It is my pleasure to present to you for the first time the 30th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, General Stephen S. Nordhaus. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, what a bunch of great, incredible smiling faces out there. Um, first off, I would like to quickly thank uh, the entire protocol teams that uh, put all this together on short notice and uh, got it together. And then for the incredible national anthem sang by retired Chief Dawson, just amazing job. One round of applause, please. For that. Brigadier General Chaplain uh, Jalewski, thank you very much for the invocation. And uh, Admiral Grady, Vice Chairman, thank you for your words about my family, about the National Guard, and what we do as a total force together to make sure that we can defend and respond, not only around the globe, but within our homeland. Admiral Fagan, thank you so much for being here. Uh, other general officers, senior civilians, senior enlisted leaders, honored guests, family and friends, and Team National Guard. Thank you for joining us today. I am humbled to begin my tour as the 30th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. I must first start off and thank my wife, Shannon. 35 years since day one, every minute, every second, honey, you've been steadfast, like Admiral Grady said, not only taking care of our family, but always thinking about the airmen and the soldiers, making sure their families were taken care of uh, across the board. So thank you, honey. To our incredible kids that just continue to serve in their own way and take care of each other and make our family so special and also focus on helping me serve all those different times from deployments and missed birthdays. Uh, Whitney and her husband Dave uh, and then uh, Clay and Madeline and to the grandkids and then Luke, Noah and Austin. All of you uh, just, just amazing and can't thank you for uh, enough for your love and support. Thank you. 
I, I think dad uh, is watching out there somewhere, could not make this trip, but uh, thanks to my incredible dad, Don. Uh, he sent my mom instead to hold down the fort and I'm starting to use army terms already. So mom, thank you for being here. It means the world to uh, our whole family and to dad and uh, just love you with my whole heart. Uh, you raised all of us kids up um, to put each uh, other uh, at, the, at the center and to support and serve others. And you gave me a glan uh, silvery uh, lining and a great example for me to follow to uh, chase down my dream. So thanks, Mom. <laughs> to my brother, uh, Jeff, who could not be here. My sister, Michelle, who's here. Thanks for making the trip. They were always steadfast and I was the youngest of three so they always uh, helped bring me along and made sure I get, uh, got to the right uh, place at the right time. And to all my extended family that's here and to incredible friends inside and outside the military, I cannot thank you enough for your tremendous support. Not a moment of this journey would be possible without you. I would like to thank General Grass who took a chance on a 180th fighter wing commander who had never been to the Pentagon before and brought me here. And to General Lingell and General Hokinson uh, Kelly and Sally, uh, thank you for uh, believing in me and giving me an opportunity, along with uh, General McKinley and all the previous 29 chiefs who came before me. Senior enlisted advisor Whitehead to you and all the uh, uh, previous uh, C's. The enlisted corps of our Department of Defense is a shining light uh, for our entire uh, force and how we fight and uh, it's an example to the world and I know everybody else wish we had what, uh, what we have, and it's thanks to you being here and to the other C's. Um, to the adjutants generals, across the 54 states, territories in the District of Columbia who have worked tirelessly to ensure our soldiers and airmen are manned, trained, and equipped for every mission, that we are capable and credible in every domain, thank you. And most of all, I'd like to thank the men and women of the National Guard, an elite and ready warfighting force that are well integrated with the Joint Force, our allies and partners, the interagency, and our local communities. And you can see that every day that you look around. Today when I woke up, 46,000 Guardsmen were engaged globally around the world, 22,000 overseas with our combatant commanders, 14,500 doing homeland defense or homeland security, and another 9,500 um, doing uh, domestic operations. Just an amazing uh, capability that we have and our National Guard is critical to our national defense and I'm proud to represent them. Going back a few years, I grew up in Putnam County, Ohio, which is named after Major General Israel Putnam, who on 19 April, 1775 was in his field behind a plow and horse riders came up and said shots heard at Lexington and Concord. He rode 100 miles on a horse to join the Army of Observation later under uh, General George Washington and served at the Battle of, uh, Battle of Bunker Hill. Little did I know I would later become a guardsman too. One day I flew with my uncle and came home and told my dad I wanted to fly. He said, go down the street and talk to Don Schmank, a retired uh, major. I knocked on Don Schmank's door. He said, Nordhaus kid, what do you want? I said, I think I want to fly for the Air Force. He said, come in, sit down. <laughs> An hour later, I left inspired to go become uh, a fighter pilot and chase my, down my dreams and go to the Air Force um, Academy. Along with him and my father, who's a J3 uh, Cub pilot, they inspired me for this career in aviation and to join the Air Force. But over the, over the course of my service, Flying active duty and in the National Guard, my experiences took me far beyond the cockpit. And there I learned just how dynamic, versatile, resilient, and responsive our National Guard is as a warfighting and responding force. With strategic depth and an operational reserve for our services, yet able to respond across the United States from over 2,500 communities to serve our citizens every minute of every day. And it's our people. We succeed because of the awesome power of our people. Our profession of arms is collaborative and cooperative. Every detail of every job counts. 
Every single soldier and airman in our organization is vital to the success of our nation and our freedoms. They unselfishly defend our nation and our freedoms with their lives. They make sacrifices to serve in harm's way. They deserve the very best leadership and they deserve dignity and respect. And even when it's tough, they always answer the nation's call. At 2 a.m. one night on a combat deployment, I walked the flight line and I came across Master Sergeant Mike Green resting on a bunker next to an F-16. This was not like Mike resting at all, but it was 110 degrees and I said, Mike, what's going on? How you doing? He said, I just talked to my wife and I just became a dad. We high-fived, we chatted a little bit and then Mike went straight back over, got onto uh, the F-16, changed out a motor and had it ready for the next morning for that combat mission. Always ready, always there. Over and over, our service members answer the nation's call, move towards the sound of the guns, defending our freedoms and responding when others need help the most. People are our most critical asset and they will always be my highest priority. Some folks have heard this before from me, but I, I believe in three simple tenets. What I call my standard operating procedure, service, optimism, and passion. I am committed to bringing service, optimism, and passion to each and every day I serve alongside you in my new role. Starting with service, the spirit of service is at the heart of everything we do. We serve our nation and our people. We serve the constitution. We serve alongside our allies and partners our joint force and our interagency colleagues. My first personal experience with the National Guard happened back in 1992. She and I were stationed at Homestead Air Force Base and Hurricane Andrew came through a Cat 5 hurricane and it destroyed our first home and two cars. The National Guard was there for me. Just as right now our guardsmen are working tirelessly to respond to Hurricane Helene and Milton, they are saving lives in devastated communities they are clearing roads and establishing distribution sites. And so our fellow Americans can regain access to life-saving food and water. They are not only bringing supplies and expertise to these communities, they are bringing hope and compassion to our neighbors in need. When we serve each other, there's absolutely nothing we cannot achieve together. My second tenet is optimism. Now that might seem strange in light of challenges that we face today, both at home and abroad and challenges that lie ahead. But we serve because we believe we can make a difference, because we believe progress is possible. And optimism is a force multiplier for turning those beliefs into action. Right, Danny? <laughs> My mom and dad always taught me they aren't problems, Steve. They're opportunities to excel. When I walked past a pillar in the gym at the United States Air Force Academy, I was having a tough day, but I saw on this pillar, it said, tough times don't last, but tough people do. That resiliency and passion drives me today to serve others and commit to giving you my all as chief of the National Guard Bureau and to serve our nation. In conclusion, as you can probably tell, I'm focused on people and our mission. Everything I do in this role is to serve people so we can serve mission and gain success. Every policy we improve, Every nation and community we visit and every decision we make, we put our elite soldiers and airmen and civilians front and center. We bring strength and courage to honor this organization and without you, we cannot succeed. During my time as chief, we will remain keenly focused on readiness every day, particularly in the light of great power competition. We are defending a nation that has more than 330 million people that call it home. We are defending a constitution that over 1.3 million Americans have died to uphold. We must be ready to ensure our freedoms are never in doubt nor democracy throughout the world. We will remain passionate about partnerships. We are all part of a team making us stronger together and stronger tomorrow. With our local communities across America, with our governors and adjutants general, and with a joint force and members of Congress, the interagency, and our international partners through the National Guard State Partnership Program and on and on. We must accelerate our integration and teamwork, building partner capacity and capability that no adversaries can match to ensure we have the ultimate deterrence. 
We will remain energized about modernization, not only ensuring our soldiers and airmen are equipped for today's missions, but ensuring our organization is constantly evolving and modernizing to meet challenges. We must be deployable, interoperable, and sustainable as the operational reserve and strategic depth of our services. For 387 years, we have never stopped innovating. We will, not, we will never stagnate. We will not stop improving. The National Guard is and always will be a proven and experienced force, ready today and more ready tomorrow. Finally, we'll be forever passionate about the National Guard, our soldiers and airmen and our families. Our families enable us to serve like Admiral Grady, our vice chairman talked about. Together we can turn problems into opportunities. We can strengthen our collective defense, both at home and abroad and create disturbing dilemmas for our strategic competitors, guaranteeing our freedoms and our way of life. Thank you for all you do and all that you do to support us. Together we will be always ready and always there. Thank you. Thank you, General Nordhaus. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force and Army song following by the departure of the official party. This concludes today's ceremony. Please follow the direction of the ushers to congratulate General Nordhaus and his family through a receiving line at the front of the flag line.